Hi everyone, welcome and uh, welcome to AppShare Live. Um, today uh, I'm joined by Paul Tullock and uh, Luke Rees. Um, I could uh, spend quite a long time uh, introducing them both, um, but I'll, I'll let them do that. But just to say I've, I've had the pleasure of working with both of these gentlemen over the years, and uh, I know that, that they've got some uh, great ideas, they're doing great work in their schools as well. Uh, I'll just uh, hand over to them to let them introduce themselves and say hello and what have you. So uh, over to you, uh, Paul. Want to uh, say hello? And who are you doing? And all that sort of stuff, please. Hello, uh, I'm Paul Tullock. Uh, I am e-learning and computing lead at the fabulous Richardson Day School in Wolves End, uh, and recently uh, a class of the ADA 2017. That's about it, really. <laughs> For those who don't know, Wall's End um, is in North Tyneside, although you might have guessed that from Paul's accent then. Yes, quite, uh, I'm quite a broad Geordie, so not far from Newcastle, about four or five miles away from Newcastle. Cool, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll jump back to you in a little while. And to give people a bit of a heads up, um, can you just quickly say what you're going to be sharing today? Uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, the new Apple Clips and how it can be used in the classroom to especially support things like science and uh, learning needs, all, all range of learning difficulties, and maybe a little bit um, of uh, using Book Creator as well for science. That's, a, that's, a, that's a really good to hear. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so uh, now over to uh, Luke. Now, you're a bit, you're a bit further away, uh, Luke, although it might not sound like it. Well, I hope not anyway, but uh, yeah, um, I'm out in Dubai at the moment. Uh, I'm working at Jester, I'm the assistant head there at the primary school. Um, it's a, you might recognize the school because uh, I believe you've got some uh, AppShare Live stalwarts uh, from, from Jester Dubai. Uh, you might know Steve Bambry uh, and uh, Tom Edge. I think they've both been on, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, today I'll be... Um, I, at the moment, I mostly deal with sort of digital leadership in schools, um, and and a lot of that comes down to trying to sort of get the systems and the structures right, um, and that means at times that I can be sort of further away from the classroom than I'd like to be. Um, but I, th this is one of these uh, the the app that I'll share today is called Symbaloo, and it's uh, really really it's one of those apps that just speaks for itself. I probably won't have to do anything. I'll put it on, and people will just get it straight away. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping so anyway. So um, a little bit more about you, Luke. So um, I met you years ago at uh, the academy and, and what have you with Apple and things. But I've been to, to Jess uh, and, and you hold a digital summit. I did a keynote there for the one last year. You've got another one coming up soon. Yes, actually, yeah, it's, it's, I've just pulled uh, some things together and it's looking really good for October. Um, again, there's, there's about 50 or so speakers all in all. Um, but uh, we're very lucky this year that uh, we'll have Abdul Johan over with us um, and also Joe Moretti as well will be speaking with us. So uh, some fairly big names there. Uh, but really excited. I think, no, if I think about it, um, one of the reasons I even went down the route of doing anything with the distinguished educators was uh, from hearing uh, Abdul speak, you know. Uh, so to have him over with us again in September, uh, in October, is going to be fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a really good time when I was work, working at the, the, the schools and what have you, and, and at the uh, event last October. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to be an even bigger uh, event and successful and what have you for you this year. So uh, if you yeah. want to find out more about you, how, how, how can I find out more about um, what you do and how to uh, get involved in the summit yeah. and what have you as well? So the best thing is uh, to follow us on the, the Twitter channels. Um, uh, so you can follow myself, Luke Reese, EDU, or you can follow Steve Bambry. Um, and also any of the Jess um, Twitter accounts. So Jess Summit is, a, is its Twitter account itself. Uh, but the best thing is um, uh, this week, uh, Steve uh, re redid and, uh, the uh, Jess Digital website. So if you go to jessdigital.com, uh, there's the summit there. And soon, we're hoping within the next week or so, uh, the tickets will be available. Um, and yeah, it'd be fantastic. But go to jessdigital.com. I mean, it's, it's a good website in itself. It's a blog that, that sort of takes from other people's blogs as well. So um, do that. But uh, yeah, keep your eye, keep the space, I think we're saying. All right, cool. Brilliant. Right, so uh, we're going to go in this order today then. So uh, Paul will go up first. Okay. Over to, uh, Luke. 
And then um, we'll have a bit of a pub quiz after that uh, in a little bit that I've got uh, sort of planned and, and, and organised and what have you. So um, over to you, Paul. So if I just uh, do this and then put your attention to everyone. Hello. Um, right. Um, I'm going to be sharing uh, the new Apple Clips today. Um, it's not been out very long, but uh, we, it's already a firm favourite in my class. The, the, all, my, all of my kids ask um, if they can use clips to show them all in. Uh, and I think there's a reason for that. Um, it's just laden with lots of brilliant features that are so simple to use. And you can make a video in about 30 seconds. So uh, I will show you now how to use that. So um, is my screen just being shared over and over again? Yep, so yeah, so yeah, it's on yep. you right now. Right, okay. So you can't see your iPad yet, mate. Yeah, two seconds, it seems to have jumped off. Um can you see it now? No, can see you. Can you see me? Oh right, give me two seconds, <laughs> be back again. Um share screen. Yeah. Share entire screen. I see screen sharing, but I can see your Mac rather than your iPad. Yeah. Um, see my iPad now? Yes. Right, brilliant. Um, so Clips is, uh, as I said, it's a very simple, easy to use uh, tool. Um, it's free, which makes it even better for any classroom. And um, it has lots of brilliant features. So I will just get started. Uh, there's my nicely painted ceiling. but. Um, First of all, it will let you uh, take videos of yourself or flip the camera the other way around and take videos of anything else. Um, it will let you take a photograph, but it will also let you um, import anything that's in your library. So I will start by just making a very quick introduction to AppShare Live. So on the top of the screen, I don't know if you can see that because my iPad seems to be a little bit stretched. Uh, can you see the top of my I can't see that. Sorry. screen? Right. Um, I'll take that down ever so slightly, and I'll just stretch my screen out, maybe a little bit. Maybe that might work. And on the top of the screen there, you can see there are four icons. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So on the top, you've got uh, four brilliant icons, which uh, let you do a range of things. Um, so simple to use. So the first one is the T just there. I'll press that. I'll just put it full screen again so you can see. And this gives you a, a really good, uh, a really good quality, a professional title screen. So there's quite a few ranges there that you can choose from. So uh, I will go for the happy birthday one. Just click download it. And if you double tap on the words, you can uh, type in anything that you like within reason that it will fit. So welcome to AppShare Live. Click apply in the top corner, which you probably can't see, but there is a in the top right hand corner, there is a, a yellow apply button. Click apply. And if you hold down the record button, which also appears to have uh, slightly disappeared off mine, so I shall just make that there. If you hold the record button, that screen will now record and be animated right there. And you'll have a lovely little introduction page. So that's the first page. Take your finger off. It really is that simple. All you've got to do is uh, hold down the, the, the red button, hold to record. It will record your voice. It will record whatever's happening on the screen as well, which is fantastic. But also what I really like about this is you've got the microphone button next to it. So you can turn off the sound. So if you are speaking over the top, it will just mute the sound in the background. And very simply, I will add another photograph. Um, so I will just add this one in. And next to the T on the top of the screen, you've got a star inside. And that gives you lots of little cool features for graphics that you can pop over anywhere, uh, your pictures or your videos, uh, which is fantastic. So I will choose this one, which I can move anywhere that I like, very simply. I can double tap that and just put a... Uh, one Saturday morning 
take that out there and move it wherever I like. And again, if I just uh, hold record, that appears over the top. Looks really slick, looks really nice, especially if you're doing uh, any kind of science investigation, which I'll come on to later. Once you let go, it's gone. And uh, you can do that again. You can. I've, I've just tapped the microphone button next to it, which has got a line through it now, which will take off me talking over the top of it. And uh, if I want to do that, I just add another one. So that's great. Um, I will add another photograph in. I will add. Uh, I will add me. Um, and on the top also, you've got the filters button, which is the second from the left. Uh, filters button there. If you click that, you get this lovely option to 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 change um, black and white, which is great. We've just used that for uh, World War Two for making videos about being evacuated, which is fantastic. Um, you can have line drones, which obviously for my picture isn't that great because it's a it's a drone anyway. But you can turn photographs into a cartoon, which I will show you later on. Uh, so you could just choose one. I'll go for black and white, and I could add another one in. Just that one there. Tap that. Mr. Tulloch, hit apply, and again, just record. Uh, and that's great. But what I particularly like about this um, is the feature. If I just, uh, if I add mark in there, I'm just going to take that filter off, put the comic book filter on. But this, this to me is, uh, is why my class really enjoy it so much is, it will record everything that you say in real time and it will come up in words on the screen. So if I choose this one on the bottom there, hopefully with my strong Geordie accent, it will still pick up all of the, the words that I'm saying. Hosted by the fabulous Mark Anderson. And when you let go, so if I play that back now, for that particular slide, Hosted by the fabulous Mark Anderson. Uh, that is a fantastic tool in the in the classroom for children that aren't confident with writing. Um, I find that the a lot of my class we have uh, a few a few different learning needs and some really struggle with writing, but they have the most fabulous ideas. Um, they come out with the best descriptions, sentences, all kinds of uh, wonderful ideas. But transferring it to paper is often quite hard. Um, a very quick, easy thing to do is, uh, especially if, say, for example, you're writing. Uh, we've been writing about a great video on the Liberty Shed, the piano. Uh, one of my boys, fantastic description, absolutely marvellous. Couldn't write it down. Took the photograph of the piano, added speech to text, wrote it, uh, spoke into it, and it showed him what the sentence would look like. And it's helped him to uh, improve his confidence. Uh, about 100% more output is what is what we are now getting from that boy. And he, he's starting to enjoy his writing. Um, just to go back to that feature that I was showing you before, um, if I play it, I can now take my voice off. So it should just say what's on the screen. So simple to use, really quick. Lots of lovely, lovely features. But I also like the fact that on the top, if you click the, the sound button, um, you get a range of soundtracks. So if you are making videos, adverts, uh, science experiments, you can actually choose uh, the music that would suit that particular uh, task and piece of writing. So you can add that one in, just come back out of it and click done. And now when I play that slide again, I play that slide again, sorry. A very quick way to make a really good looking video. So simple for children to use. Um, and it's fantastic. So that's that's literally how easy it is to use. Um, I'd just like to show you something else that uh, we, we've we used uh, in class. I don't actually have any examples. So I'm using, I'm using a few clips from my class last year. But... Uh, we did it for science. Um, we we use clips a lot for science this year, and we combine it um, with the fabulous Book Creator app, which is even better now because there are a few more uh, little little extra features in there. So you can share the books easier. They can be published online, all those kinds of things. But um, 
I'm going back to that boy again in my class uh, who's not confident at writing. He's a fantastic scientist, and I've got a whole bunch of them that are fantastic scientists can explain anything, but they really struggle to write up uh, an investigation. Clips has been a game changer for him. So things like you put your title page in there, which I have. So that's great. Um, I just started making this one very quickly before. Um, so you, you put your title page. In. Yeah. I can see the screen. You can only see what? Sorry. Clips. Nope. I'm, I'm just seeing the uh, clip screen where it says vibrations. Yeah, that's. I'm just going to show you this video quickly, and then I'll go back to my. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah. So um, this is uh, again just very quickly made this morning, but um, that's just the title page. Uh, it was just. It, a few videos that I had uh, on my iPad from last year, but it was about vibrations and sound, so we added that title page on. But what's great is, um, as I was going on about these, uh, these, these, lovely, these lovely graphics as well, um, perfect to combine with the slow motion video, um, so you can really observe what's happening in science. So with my year three class last year, uh, we did vibrations of sound and the effects of what happened. So you could literally just play take the sound off there in the background so I'll, I'll mute the, the the original video and I can still have the music playing in the background but for some reason mute, uh, mute recorded audio sorry I do apologize and it's a great way for children to explain they're learning in science um, with actual examples, um, use this quite a lot to drop into Book Creator, and uh, you have a fabulous investigation, easily written up. But um, the explanations and the observations in my class, particularly, seem to be of a much higher quality. So um, that is one of the reasons why I absolutely love uh, Apple Clips. Um, it's just a fabulous resource. One thing that I didn't show you before, by the way, which um, was when I did the text, uh, the speech to text video, is if it doesn't quite show properly, you can double tap the text and you can, you can edit the text. So um, you don't have to worry about saying things over and over again to try and, and taking a long time to record uh, these videos with uh, maybe, maybe subtitles on. If it's not quite how you want it to be, um, you can just go back there very quickly and you can edit it. Uh, and make it look exactly um, how you want it to look. Um, one of the reasons that I do really like it to help with, with writing is uh, my class can say things, but it also forces them to think about where the punctuation needs to go, where they're having pauses in sentence, because uh, obviously when I just said that one about mock, it doesn't have a full stop on the end, so it's forcing them to say things like full stop to help to help them write, and it's ju it just seems to there, there seems to have been a, a, a large amount of progress in a short space of time thanks to clips. Um, so that is one of the reasons uh, why I like it, and I could go on and on, but uh, I'm really keen to find out uh, about Luke and his app. So that's it. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, oh, oh. Um, Luke, did you have any questions at all for um, Paul uh, about Apple Clips or anything at all? Uh, no, I, I really like that app actually. I, I think it's one of those uh, apps that just looks pretty intuitive straight off, straight off the bat, you know. And uh, um, fr from my side, um, what, what have you used it in? Then, so you've used it with in your science, and you've used it in writing. Have you used it in any other areas, basically? Yeah, we, we use it. My my class. Uh, I have to rein them in a little bit because we're in danger of going uh, into overload and burning the app out. So, uh, so we we've used it. Um, we we made games uh, for a topic using blocks of builders. We've used it to create adverts for videos. Uh, my my digital leaders have used it to create uh, screen videos because you can zoom in on certain areas and it's a little bit easier than having to take screenshots and go through everything. We've used, we've used it to make uh, screen videos to help our staff. They've uh, used it literally as a tool just to support writing where they will talk into it and it will it will basically write the word for them so they can check how close they are, uh, make letters, make movies. Just 
a whole range of things. It's just, it seems to be just one of these apps that children can use within five minutes. They've got a really great video. Um, and next half term, what I'm planning to use it for is uh, to make plenary videos at the end of at the end of my lessons, I'd like them to make a quick 30 second video about what they've learned. It could just be their face talk and it could be photographs of what they've done and then just upload that onto a seesaw or a Padlet and then I have very quick, very quick evidence of what they've done at the end of my lessons. So that's the plan, but we, we've used it across the board really. It's, it's just a fun, used it in maths as well. It's just a fantastic tool to explain. I think um, what, uh, from, one of the things you've just uh, sort of inspired me to definitely do is the we have um, our pupil executive committee, which I guess is the same as a, as a, a school council. It's sort of evolved from the you know the school council, yeah. and uh, we're looking for a probably a more engaging way for them to get their minutes of their meetings uh, out to the rest of the school. Um, and and at the moment they sort of write up and people don't really pay attention to them and they've tried QR code in their minutes around, but something like that where they could just uh, quickly put together exactly what they've discussed with the head teacher and the plans and all the rest of it. I think that would be great, actually, so thanks for that. What a fantastic idea, actually. And um, if you had something uh, for your digital signage, like Trilby TV, then that could go straight on. Mm. If the children are around school, what's, what's actually being talked about and the important, the important issues can be seen around school almost instantly. That's a fabulous idea. I really like that one. Massively, oh, hang on, I'm playing to everyone else. Yeah, I, I find it massively um, sort of useful. One of the things I share with teachers when I'm sort of doing training and things is about thinking about apps that are dead easy to use, sort of low access point, low entry point for skills, and then scalable in loads of ways in terms of ideas and age ranges. So, you know, children of a very young age can use it, um, but equally, you know, the, the older children, you know, 11, 12, and 13 can use it as well. Um, I, I really, really like it. And if you look on uh, hashtag Apple Clips on Twitter, uh, there, there are lots of different ideas. And in fact, some people like Joe Dale and Nina Jackson, who are watching us um, live now, um, have shared some ideas themselves. I've, I've shared a link to my blog post as well. I've got sort of five little videos you can do, like using it to uh, um, explain a process or explore uh, different elements of historical photos and, and things like that. So it's massively versatile. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a welcome addition to the sort of Apple family, I would say. Yeah, totally agree. And what's great about it is my, my children are actually telling me what they can use it for. So my children are saying, we could use it for this. How about using it for this? If, if we go on a school trip, if you take lots of photographs, we will show what we work when we get back. And they're, they're the ones who, because they've used it and, and, and have the skills and enjoyed it, they can, they can see where it's happening to their learning. So the fact that they're now giving me ideas is brilliant because um, it shows how far, we are, how far we are on with our learning and how much we are engaged and how, how it's changed over the past years. So uh, I think it's brilliant. It's, it's an opportunity for me. Cool. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we can carry on talking. I, I think, you know, a bit about um, it, sort of how it competes with things like Explain Everything, you know. Uh, explain Everything has been top of my sort of like list for explaining things and what have for a long time now. But you know, with, um, uh, with Apple Clips is that voice to text that happens straight on screen, coupled with it being pretty easy to use as well. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, I would totally and utterly agree. The, the voice to text feature is is brilliant. Um, I also think that the fact that it's free is uh, is another important matter because, as we all know, with the budget cuts that are going on, um, I love explain everything. Explain everything is one of my staple apps in my classroom. And in fact, in our school, we we have the magnificent seven apps. Where we don't want to use so many apps. We just want to be brilliant at using a core core set of apps that we can use across the curriculum. And um, I love explain everything because I love the Lisa Point feature and lots of other features, but this one is just uh, to be used by anybody in school. I've, I've used it with year one and you know they find it so simple. I can't really get down and use it uh, in reception and nursery next term. And uh, it's just it's so easy to use, but you're right, that 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 speech that turns into text is just 
quite simply, it's brilliant. It improves confidence, but not only that, you have an outstanding an outstanding result in, in half the time. So yeah, I, I think that is one of the key features of it. And that is what really, when I first saw it and first played with it, that is what grabbed my my enthusiasm for using it with the things, so to speak. But um, yeah, I think that's a, absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant feature. Well, um, just say thank you, uh, Paul, for sharing that. That's really, really good of you. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Luke now, if that's all right. Uh, and Luke's going to share with us an app uh, called Simblue. Um, I'm sure you'll tweet about it afterwards, uh, Luke. Um, but I'm just going to spell that for people in case they're trying to sort of tweet about it. So it's S Y M B A L O O. Now, Simblue, um, uh, is, it, is it an app in, in browser? Is it an app you can download from the App Store? Can you tell us more about it, Luke? Uh, yeah, so simple. Right, I'll, I'll go back a step and talk about the reason why I'm talking about it in the first place. Really, um, the whole internet is full of stuff, <laughs> stuff everywhere, pictures everywhere, internet uh, uh, videos everywhere, web links everywhere, and um, quite often when you're doing a project in school, you want to do a research project, um, and all the kids want to do is jump on Google. And they expect all the answers to be there, but you know, if you're doing a World War II topic or something like that. They will type in World War II into the inter, you know into Google search, and the first page might be a Wikipedia page, and even the Wikipedia page itself might be littered with information. Um, and it's so hard for them to decipher what is useful um, and what isn't. And, and I just think that this this app is. It's very basic, it's very visual, um, and it just, it allows you to curate, because that's where, that's that's what we need to be able to do as educators, I think, is help the children curate their ideas. And actually, it was Simon Locks who put me onto this idea from Interactive Schools, uh, the idea that actually, big bucks is to be made, in a sense, out of uh, the people who curate the stuff that's on the internet. So, uh, uh, Pinterest curate, um, pictures uh youtube create videos uh, if you if you can get into that sort of area uh then you may help people make a lot of sense uh out of the world wide web basically so this is one of those apps that when it was a, fr a friend from work uh, emma fisher she's the, li the librarian at Jesterby, and uh she she was mentioning it a lot and because you know mark you were definitely right to um spell it out to people because Symbolu, I don't think it's that catchy a name really, um, but it basically revolves around symbols. Uh, and, and as soon as you put it on the page, it was just that moment where you go, oh yeah, I get it, I get it straight away. So I'm hoping that you get the I get it moment. I'll share my screen with you now. So we're still with you. While you're bringing that up, Luke, um, so, um, those of you that are watching live, there's a live chat channel just uh, to the side of the screen on YouTube. So uh, thanks to those people uh, who are sort of joining us there. We've got uh, a bunch of people, um, Nina Jackson, Lavinia Belly, and uh, Love to Teach, Kate Jones, Primary French, BSM. Uh, great. Uh, so uh, yeah, any questions, uh, put them please into the live chat or, or drop them to us on Twitter on hashtag uh, AppShareLive. Are you still there, my friend? Hello, Luke, are you there? Uh, Things are frozen on your your uh, face. Can you, can you see uh, anything other than that, Paul? Uh, no, I've, I've just got Luke frozen as well, yeah. Okay. I think he might be having some bandwidth issues, maybe. Not quite sure. It was working before, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah. Oop. Getting back? Now, I, I, I'm going to um, 
I'm going to just jump on myself, I think, uh, whilst that's going on to see if Luke can bring himself back, uh, so to speak. Uh, right, so I'll jump on to uh, me then. Um, so uh, that should be, be presenting to everybody. Okay, so um, while Luke's getting himself sorted and, and what have you, and I'll just uh, mute uh, him for a second. Uh, Paul, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine, yeah. Brilliant stuff. So I'm going to share um, something today, which I've been sharing for quite some time. Um, and um, it's a quizzing tool um, called Quizzes. Now, I've been sharing um, coats uh, for a long time now. It's a staple for low stakes quizzing. Um, but if you're um, aware of Kahoot for, for quizzing, um, and, and Kahoot there's lots of different things, not just uh, the low stakes quizzing, but you can use it for polling and uh, sort of gathering information, all sorts of stuff. But when it comes to low stakes quizzing, with, with Kahoot, um, you have those sort of top five people that um, uh, get shown on the leaderboard and what have you. And so I, I worry, with class sizes uh, increasing, you know, um, I do worry about there always being the same sort of top sort of five people who get onto the leaderboard and there never being any others. There might be sort of six or seven who regularly sort of make it into there a little bit, but in the, you've got other kids who don't. And so I really worry about um, those children because it can be quite a sort of disaffecting thing rather than a positive thing. And it's good for teachers to find out um, what children know and what have you and to use technology to mark stuff for you and all that sort of thing. I think that's a really uh, positive win with um uh, with uh, with education technology, but um, worry me. So I came across quizzes. Um, Paul, can you confirm? Can you see my um, uh, two seconds? There we go. The screen share. Entire screen. Uh, can you see my quizzes window, Paul? Yes, I can. Yes. Right, so this is quizzes here. I've got a quiz that I've already loaded up and what have you. Okay, and we can go to play live. But I'm going to going to create a quiz first, just so you how. Uh, you can go about creating a quiz on quizzes. Now, uh, there is a, an app for um, iPads, uh, which is kind of why I'm linking this. But the app for um, quizzes on uh, iPads is actually just for the kids, uh, for them to use to join in so that they can uh, take part in the quiz. Um, what have you, you do need to use a browser. And you can do that in Safari. Uh, I find it easier to do it actually just on, on my Mac. Um, but obviously, you could do it on a Chromebook or or whatever. My um, quizzes page has become unresponsive, so I'm just going to uh, see if I can sort this out. So I'm going to do a quick quiz name. I'll call it App Share Live. Give me okay, Paul. Yes, yes, fine, totally fine. So I'm going to hit done. And you can put an image at the top if you want to. I'll just hit done. And then we can add questions. Uh, you know, so what is two plus two? Option one, uh, we'll have three, we'll have four, we'll have five, and we'll have six, like that. And we just tick the correct answer like that on, on the side. Happy days, no problem. Okay, but question to yourself, okay? And you can do things to have images to respond to them and all the rest of it, so forth and so on. But um, teachers are, are, are really time poor. And so I want to show you how you can really easily make your own quizzes uh, using quizzes other people have made. Uh, within quizzes, so you, you search for questions. So I'm going to search for questions uh, around, uh, let's say, uh, French verbs. Okay, and so here we have a whole bunch of quiz titles. So I can do. I can click onto this quiz here. I can go. All oh, right, I like that question. I don't like that one. I like that question. Uh, uh, I like that question, but I don't like the rest. Okay, let's have a look at this quiz by someone completely different. Okay, I like that quiz question. I like that quiz question. Can you see how quickly and easily you can just flip through lots of different quizzes people have made to generate your own quiz? It's really, really, really quick and easy. Okay, so fantastic. When you're done and you've made your quiz, you simply go to finish. And you choose the grade range uh, that the quiz is acceptable and suitable for. And what have you, choose your um, subjects. So we've got a bit of maths and uh, a bit of uh, world languages. And it was um, uh, early math and um, French. So finish and create quiz. And that quiz is the mate. And, and just like we saw from before, it's as easy to play the quiz as just go and play live. So that's how you make your quizzes. Really, really simple. I'm not going to run that quiz though, so I'm just going to jump back 
into my quizzes. And I'm going to um, come down here. There's a quiz there. Brilliant stuff. And I'm going to go to play live. So, Paul, are you ready to join in? Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. So, uh, to join in the quiz, and uh, there's a bit of lag between where we're at here and where you are if you're viewing. Okay. Um, and a message or two from people who are watching uh, to tell me if you can see me, everything okay, that would be really helpful too. Um, so, um, to run my quiz, I will simply go to proceed. There's a bunch of options below and what have you. So, once that's there, code 516050. So, to join in, either load the app. Okay, um, or go to join.quizzes.com, and when you're there, uh, you simply type in the code that you can see. So I'm actually on my iPad at the same time here. So I'm just going to go through on there and um, put my name in. We can see uh, Luke is still around. <laughs> so Luke is is still with us uh, in uh, in game spirit, but not actual uh, presenting. But we'll come back to him. Uh, in just a moment, we've got Nina Jackson joined us, I think, as well. Okay. Paul's on, all the rest of it. Brilliant stuff. So, I will hit start game here in a second. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to swipe over, not to there. Um, I should be able to show my iPad screen. There we go. Can we see my iPad? Yeah. Yeah, got it. I love the name of your Apple TV, by the way. Hmm. Oh, Luke is back. Can you see my iPad, guys? Uh, no. At the minute, we've got uh, your Chrome. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to um, hit start on the game. Okay. I'm going to jump over to my iPad view here, working on a basis that you can see it. So I've got a countdown, and the questions appear. So iOS is the software. Brilliant. So I, I know the answer to that. Uh, so it's system. So I tap that. Great stuff. In end. There you go, fantastic. Not really very fair on the others, given that I uh, know the answers to all the questions. Wrong, just to help out. Okay, so um, there, there, there's quizzes working. I'm just going to uh, unmirror uh, my iPad now and then come back to uh, the main screen here. Can you all hear me, guys? Yeah, fine. So I just want to make sure the connectivity and things are, are working okay. So I'm going to stop screen sharing for a second and come back in. Uh, can you wave, guys, if you can see uh, my. Uh, you can hear me all right, yeah? Okay, cool. So look, um, the quiz is going on. Whilst that's happening still, I've stopped playing it myself. Now, with Kahoot, you do need to share your screen, uh, your, your device, onto the big screen so pupils can see the um, various quizzes, uh, sorry, quiz questions that are taking place and what have you. Um, but when it comes to using quizzes, um, it's a bit different. So you don't have to do that. You can share just uh, the uh, room code, and, and then pupils can get on and uh, do the quiz. Now, if you want to look at your screen, you can see, you can see uh, you know, Luke's getting on all right, and what have you, you can see how many pupils have got which bits right in the, uh, on the various questions and, and what have you. I'm just going to end the game a second now. Uh, so sorry to those of you uh, that are still playing. You do get a, a scorecard, the person with the highest score is at the top, so well done, Paul. Rosie and Muscat's there, she's second, so forth and so on. Now, um, jumping back into um, Hangouts, I'll, I'll just talk about um, quizzes from now on rather than showing it. So I'll just stop uh, screen sharing and make sure that I am to all of you. Uh, so if you want to come, come back to me, uh, Luke and Paul, so we can talk and things. Yeah. Um, when it comes to quizzes, um, it, it really is very, very similar to but so that, that, that idea that you can um, sort of have children working on their own devices, the questions come up at different points in time, um, the ability to still do those sorts of things you'd want to do, which is have it marked for you, uh, better get a report, which is sort of conditionally formatted with colours, so you can quickly and easily see 
um, you know, where children are at across different questions that is still there. And I really like it, but I just think it's a little, just a little bit more inclusive um, than Kahoot. And I also think that the, the um, quizzes themselves, it's a little bit easier to actually create as well. You know, just pull sort of you know, questions from here and there and so forth and so on. So, I don't know what your feelings are at all, guys. Have you, have you used quizzes at all? Um, sorry, if you go, um, sorry. Um, I haven't used it. Ah, so I, I, can't, I can't hear either of you now. Have I muted you by any chance? Yeah, no. Um, can you hear me now? Any joy? Oh, dear. Um, yeah, can you hear me? That's not ideal. I can hear you, Luke. <laughs> so I can't hear either of you. Uh, let me just jump on to um, you, the live stream. Okay. Um, people watching the live stream, can you hear me and can you hear the others? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'll carry on speaking just in case, just as a check. Yeah, I'm here as well, Zach. Yeah. Just coming through now. Okay, so it would appear that everyone else can hear you guys, but I just can't for some reason. Okay. I think my mirroring must have just like just put everything out there. So that's quite interesting. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do with that. Um, if people can still hear you, Luke, uh, in a moment we'll jump on to yours. I'm kind of done with my uh, presentation. I'd want to share quizzes. If you've got any follow-up questions, please sort of send them through either on the uh, live chats uh, or, or uh, via uh, the hashtag AppShareLive on Twitter. Uh, you can set up your quizzes at quizzes.com. If pupils are joining in browser, the join code is join.quizzes.com. The thing I'd finish off by saying is sometimes, um, particularly with Luke, actually, um, you know, given where he is working in Dubai, um, cultural sensitivity uh, is really important given the multi faith environment that he works in, what have you. Some of those memes that come up at the end of each question uh, are a bit inappropriate. It's not like they're naked or anything you know, completely um, out there and inappropriate. But a bit of things are, um, would be seen as being inappropriate. What I love about um, uh, quizzes is that you can now go into a section there called My Memes and you can make your own. So you, know, you can get a photograph of you going, and then, uh, you know, for, for the winning question and a, for the down one and for the, for the wrong answer and what have you. Uh, you can make a whole series of those and you can use those in your quizzes rather than the ones that come in as standards. So that can help sort of make it more um, applicable uh, in your region. Uh, I know we've got Muscat Mum joining us who's um, a teacher in Oman. So, you know, there, there are lots of ways in which we can make this uh, work, uh, workable and relevant uh, in, in places from around the world. So. Thank you very much for that bit, and uh, I hope you enjoyed quizzes. It's completely free. Um, so what I'm going to try now, Luke, is I'm going to try and hand over to you again. I can't hear you, uh, but apparently uh, everyone else can. So I'm going to hand over to you and we'll give it a, one last sort of go on getting you uh, sharing about Symbolo. I can see you giving the thumbs up. Super job. So, Paul, so I'm, I'm going, going to present you to everyone, um, and so you should be, in you theory, you ready to roll. Okay, so... I can, I can hear you and I've got you. Yeah. iPad's there as well, Luke. The iPad's there as well, is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Cool. Does it fill the iPad? screen? <laughs> it, do, it does, yeah. It fills the screen, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. So, in that case, I'll show you the uh, app that I sort of started on earlier. I bigged it up a lot earlier, so now I'm just going to get around to showing you. So, this is Symbolo. You can see it right in the uh, bottom of the screen here. Um, it's the, uh, I, I've just moved it so you can see which one it is. It's the uh, S-Y-M-B-A-L-O-O, Symbolo. So, uh, now then, Paul, my screen's not moving. Can you, is it moving there? It's not, it's not moving here either. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, you, you, your mouse point is moving yet. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. <laughs> Let me just try and disconnect it and reconnect it. Sorry. No. Hey, there you go. Yeah, I can see it, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, um, hopefully, from the, the second you see it, you can almost kind of get it. It's got a Google, so we're talking about curating ideas. It's, um, it doesn't take the Google search sort of features out of, of, of any work at, at all, um, because in a sense, you know, you, you still need children to be able to go onto Google um, and then to um, search 
for whatever they need to as part of their research skills. But what Symbaloo will allow you to do is to curate some of your ideas. So there are some that are already set up that you could, you could use from the product, from the app, um, or you can set your own one up. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add a new web mixer called it. We're going to pretend that we're doing one on World War II, the good old-fashioned uh, Key Stage 2 project. Um, and it gives you a blank slate. Now, what you're able to do is to preset the tiles that you want the children to uh, visit. So I'm going to go in here and type in World War II for kids. Um, and I'm going to find this, this uh, primary homeworks uh, help page here on the top. Uh, I'm going to open it up. Yep, I like the look of that. That's, uh, that's something that I would want my children to look at uh, as a year six class, say, for example. So you can see in the top right-hand corner of the screen, just below the uh, battery sign there, there's the uh, symbol that usually means to share things. So if I share that, it gives me the options of opening the tile, adding the tile, opening Safari, and copy the link. Uh, for the purpose of what we're doing today, I'd like to add that tile. And you see it flashes up saying success. So when I go back into uh, my WebMix page, you can see the first thing that I've added is my page. Now, look, for a whole load of reasons, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, from e-safety purposes, uh, you're able to just come in and make sure they've got everything they need there. Um, but al also just the speed at which you're able to access uh, the ideas also is fantastic. So we're going to add another one in now just for the sake of what we're doing. Um, what you will find, though, is that if you keep adding, uh, if you keep adding these uh, websites, uh, sorry, a bit laggy on the internet this year. If you keep adding, uh, or, or, you know, lots of different things uh, from kids clothes. <laughs> Let's try that again. What about two kids? Okay. I'm getting some interesting search results from the things that I'm typing in here. <laughs> I don't know why. Let me try that again. Uh, world or two for kids. Okay. Uh, here's another one. I'm just 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 for the sake of it, I'm going to go through the same process again. Again, this is another uh, website I'd like to add. So I'm going to click the top corner. I'm going to add the tile. What you'll what you'll start to notice is um, actually they're all coming up as as white squares um, with the uh, yellow star in the middle, um, which is which can be useful, um, but. What I like to do is, is use a bit of a code with the children so they know exactly what they're looking for. So, for example, uh, I want, you know, I might do a section now of tiles that are just going to be pictures. Um, I might do pictures, let's say we would do the pictures of the leaders of World War II. So in here, I'm going to type in Winston Churchill. And uh, we're going to search him as an image. There we go. Choose a nice picture of Winston, right, okay. And, and I might want to choose, um, obviously I would have an area that, that looked at all of these different things. So now I'm just going to copy and paste the link from the top of the page this time instead of adding a link. Um, and what that will allow me to do, if I double click on uh, one of these, it says I can now add a new tile. So in there, I'm going to post that uh, URL from Winston Churchill. And I'm going to write, call the name of the tile Winston Churchill. Churchill. Um, and I'm going to make it brown. And it comes up with a Google image, but it also has Winston Churchill underneath it. And because I've uh, labeled it brown, a bit of a key, um, all of the pictures I'll put up in the right hand corner of this. Um, you know, and I will I'll give them the key of anything that is brown uh, is the image so that when they click on that, they're just taken through to uh, what we're doing there. Um, so, for example, you might want to, again, uh, go to YouTube and get a, we'll get a video of Winston Churchill. 
it is quite laggy this side. I do apologize. Winston Churchill video. There we go. Okay, we're looking at this earlier from uh, history.com. And what I'll, what I'll then do is I'll copy it, I'll paste it into a tile. Hopefully, it'll go uh, be nice and slick. And uh, I will color that one black, then, for example. And the children will know that all the tiles that are black are um, videos, all the tiles that are brown are pictures, all the tiles I have red for homework tasks. Um, we go. It's not let me uh, do anything right now. Sorry, it's difficult. Hang on. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to add that one in. Uh, it's not adding. Um, okay, but in a in a nutshell, uh, this this is. Uh, uh, the 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 app, if you like, um, you you constantly then you you come up with your projects. Uh, for example, um, I have a whole range of them set up. But it's something that I didn't realize that that didn't come across was um, uh, I have a, an account on my phone uh, where which is where I've done uh, a lot of projects, and then using the same logon, I've come on onto the app. Uh, but it didn't bring all of the ones up that I'd stored on the phone. But it is is something that can be done on the phone, uh, uh, on online, um, and via the iPad. But look, it's as, it's really as simple as it is that is laid out there. Um, so yeah, curating your ideas for your projects can be done from uh, from key stage one. Obviously, for e safety purposes, it reduces the amount that children are f uh, filtering through uh, different things online, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th I think it's it's quite useful for that reason. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here now. Go. <clears throat> oh. And uh, Paul, could you hear me through that? Yeah, I could. Yeah, that that looks like a fantastic app. Um, I have seen it before, but I've never used it. Um, yeah. And what I was thinking when I was when you were explaining and showing uh, is my children when they use things like clips is uh, they put photographs in, and I'm always talking about uh, make sure that 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 you the photograph can be used, and you know you're not breaking. Um, yeah. Yeah, want to shift the copyright, but what I really like about that is, especially with my class, they always have. Um, uh, I can't remember which one it is, but they've always got the, the the little things across the top of it, like a photo stock image, and it yes. it, it kind of it kind of takes the edge off of their work. So by having a space where they can go and access those photographs, ones that you've carefully curated, all in one space, is a fantastic way of doing it. Um, and it just that's going to save time for your children, which is also going to make you the children's work better. Uh, yeah, and I, I think I think you're right. It's about it's about um, so it reduces the amount of uh, I think the technical term is faff. Yeah. They, they don't uh, you know it reduces the amount of of time that the children sort of waste almost uh, trying to hone their skills of. Of finding out something that is relevant and useful for the topic that they're doing, um, and and that's just look, it's it's so simple. It's a page where you can link in each of your the things that you've got for your ideas for yes. your project, and there's still the Google search in the middle that you can use and access if you need to anyway. Yeah, but it looks great. I, I um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use that after the half term holidays because the way that I've been sharing web pages and things like that is uh, I've either done it through a Padlet, which is great, yeah. it doesn't look as easy as that, and you know, that that the way it's all set out, you can get more things there, and you, the coding's brilliant, but I've also been sharing things through things um, like Airdrop, uh, yeah. using Seesaw, which is, it, it must be time consuming for me again, so you know, yeah, really good, really good idea, I'm gonna try it. Uh, I was gonna ask one question, is it free? Is it again? Sorry to interrupt you, Paul. Um, so, uh, so I, I, I still can't hear either of you guys. So the, the, the YouTube live chat is telling me that you are still working and, and there's some great feedback, Luke, uh, from people watching on your session. Um, but I have got a question um, from the live chat, uh, which says, so once you have all your websites, videos, pictures, etc., uh, do you still see the empty tiles on screen? 
Could you um, tell people whether, uh, can you answer that question? Did, do you hear that, Paul? Did you see did the you end? Okay. Yes, uh, he said, um, he said, yeah, I can hear you fine. He said, he said, yeah, so it, he was, said one. it was, uh, have your websites, videos, pictures, etc. Do you still see the empty tiles on screen? And also asking the question about whether or not it's free. Yes, uh, so I think Paul asked the same question there as well. So yes, it's free. <laughs> yes, it's free. Um, and yes, you do see the empty tiles actually. Um, I, I've not found a way of, of of getting rid of the empty tiles off there. Um, but uh, I will show. I wonder whether Mark will indulge me for a second if I go back. Paul, will you give me a shout and tell me that this is still working it goes back to my iPad uh, yeah it's there yeah, yeah. Um, so if you if you want to delete it or whatever you can still uh, you just literally drag and drop things in there but yes actually the the empty tiles do remain unfortunately um, although I mean uh, Symbaloo actually sell that as a bit of a, a stylistic uh, element if you like they say that actually you know if you if you group your uh, pictures in brown at the top and then uh, your videos are black, black at the bottom, then you've got clear separation between them and you can use it a bit like um, a DJ board, I guess, you know, with all the sound samples on. That's great. Really like that. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm getting from the, the, the fact that you're not talking anymore <laughs> that you've had those questions. That's so weird. <laughs> okay, so uh, award for most random app share live so far with the audio um, goes to us today, I think. Look, um, because of these issues and what have you, um, I, I'm just going to um, sort of say a few words if that's okay and um, give you a chance to sort of speak one more time uh, and then we'll, we'll sort of wrap it up. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, uh, I, I know that I couldn't hear your presentation, but from the comments and what have you on, 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 on Twitter and on the live chat on YouTube, uh, people really, really enjoyed the presentation. Uh, Luke, so thank you ever so much for that. Uh, thank you to uh, Paul for um, sort of sharing and uh, what have you like you did and for um, sort of helping sort of move the conversation on when I couldn't do that a few minutes ago with a chat with Luke and that as well. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing about Apple Clips as well. You know, like I say, massively relevant um, and what have you. Uh, just to wrap up, um, just want to share, Paul, um, you, can you share your Twitter handle? Um, you know, if you share online, uh, other places people might have sort of um, some more of your work and what you do, can you do that, is okay? Um, yes, that's fine. Uh, yes, uh, my Twitter handle should just be underneath my name there. It is at Mr. Tullick. Um, I share as many ideas as I can on Twitter. I also write a blog, which I, I don't write write enough of, which I should do, but uh, that is Mr. T Teaching with Tech. Um, and uh, you can tweet me any, any questions that any questions that you like, or um, I'm always looking for Great, great opportunities to work work with any sort sort of other classes around the world. So if if you'd like to do a project or anything like that, then please please tweet away. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. See, look seamless. It's always like I'm going to hear what you were saying. <laughs> it's not in my head. <laughs> thank you ever so much, Paul. Uh, thank you for getting up early on a Saturday morning uh, to to come join in and share some ideas and what have you. And uh, if I don't see you before, I'll see you in a few weeks uh, down in uh, London. So uh, over to you uh, then, Luke. Uh, sort of last chance. You want to say uh, anything to um, sort of share where people can find more about you and what have you? Maybe the iPad Educators site is a place to go for some resources and things as well. Yep. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, I think there's a there's a few places where you can sort of get in touch with some of the stuff that we're doing over in Dubai. Um, first of all, is my Twitter handle, which is uh, Luke Reese Edu, um, and uh, it, that, that's actually been changed. It was Lord Lukey for a long time, uh, but uh, it wasn't very professional. Uh, so it's Luke Reese R W E S E D U. Um, as well as that, okay, we mentioned earlier on JustDigital.com, uh, largely hosted by Steve, but um, I, do, I do work alongside Steve's. So go to JustDigital.com. Uh, you will you'll find there about the Just Summit, which again, like we said, is going to be it's going to be epic. It was last year. Mark was fantastic. I know he can't hear me now. There's, if I can get him to nod, yeah, I think he's smiling. He might know. Um, <laughs> uh, Mark was fantastic last year. One of the uh, one of the teachers came up to me and said that was the best CPD they'd ever had. Um, uh, it, it was fantastic, and it's going to be the same again. It's it's limited actually. We only have about three hundred spaces available. So as soon as you see tickets go uh, online and on sale, 
get them because they get they get snapped up pretty quickly. Um, and uh, through there as well, uh, like Mark mentioned, uh, iPadEducators.com. Uh, it's the site I founded with Steve, um, and he absolutely is the power horse behind it. Uh, you know, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but the, there is so much to do with how uh, using iPads in education and all the cool. It was it was that you know the sort of idea of trying to be a content curator again back in the day. When we first went online and looked, that there were a million apps on iTunes, and uh, you know everybody was asking the question, "Well, what you know, um, what apps can I use in the classroom?" I think, like Paul mentioned earlier on, it's really about uh, if you are the tech integrated person in your school, it's really about choosing the best apps um, and and sticking to those. Really, like this magnificent seven, I like that idea. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for giving us the chance to present today. I uh, hope you liked Simbaloo. Follow us um, on Just Digital. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, mate. That's awesome. All right. Well, look, um, the only thing that's uh, left me to say, really, apart from a uh, final sort of thank you to Paul and Luke, like I say, for, for coming on and sharing, and say thank you to you uh, for coming and joining in. And so um, yeah, I hope you can tune into the next one. Don't forget the um, YouTube channel. Uh, it's got all the previous episodes, which is great for CPD. Please share those with colleagues in your school if you'd like to. Uh, there's some fantastic teaching and learning ideas shared across uh, all the different episodes of AppShare Live. Uh, we try to sort of focus on the learning activities and that would be rather than making the technology to start, uh, making teaching and learning the focus so that when we bring the tech in, it really does make it more purposeful. Thank you to Luke again uh, for sharing Symbolu. Thank you to you too, Paul, for sharing Apple Clips. And uh, I'd love to have you both on again in the future. So um, keep them peeled. Uh, thank you to everyone who's tuned in and uh, engaged much in the chat and what have you. And so that's it for another episode. Thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, bye.